y'all, welcome back to our channel. So today I have my wonderful husband here with me. We're gonna talk to you guys about how we stay afloat being a family of five with one main income. I just say one main income. We just wanted to talk about that because there are a lot of things that we wish we had known before we became a family of five with one main income. So we're gonna share a few things with you guys about how we budget and just how we stay afloat in general. So I work in IT. We have one main income. And in order to make our lifestyle as comfortable as possible, you gotta do some budgeting, okay? So when I get my check, right? I factor in groceries, I factor in gas, food, and maybe a going out to eat every once in a while, you know what I'm saying? But you have to be that meticulous when you're dealing with your money because if you don't, you're gonna come up short in a lot of areas and that's what we try to avoid. So the one main thing I do as a wife to support my husband doing that and to spend as less as possible is I cut out the middleman in every area that I possibly can. Like, and what I mean by cutting out the middleman is if there's anything that I have the ability to do, I do it. If I don't know how to do it and I feel like I can do it, then I put in the work, I study, I figure out how to do it and what to do. These are things that we would usually pay people to do, right? So, for instance, doing my children's hair. You know, my kids, I had never done locks before they had locks. I went on YouTube and I looked up videos, I did my research and I figured out how to do locks. Um, and I understand that some people are more versed in certain areas than others, so I've already had a feel for doing hair. So maybe that's why it was a bit easier for me. But if there's something that you have a feel for, then do your research and figure out how to do that so you won't have to go out and pay someone to do it. Lots of times, you don't have to have a feel for something, but if you study and you research and you're passionate about figuring out, you can figure it out because when we first got married, I did not know how to cook, y'all. <laughs> I didn't, like, I didn't know how to cook. <laughs> and I know many of you have never tasted my cooking, but I ain't trying to toot my own horn or nothing, but as good as it looks on YouTube, that's how it tastes. So, that's how I brought it a long way. Yeah, so I went from like not knowing how to cook at all to being one of the best cooks that, you know, my family probably know, you know, you were supposed to come in on that, so I wouldn't have to too wild. Oh, <laughs> oh, no, that's good though, she can cook, she can throw it out, for real, she, she, she doing her thing. But I didn't want to just always have to go out and spend money on food, so I made it my duty to learn how to cook, to learn how to be whatever it is that my family needs within my power and within the resources that I have around me. In order to cut out the middleman, you have to take steps. It's not just going to happen overnight. Mm -hmm. We've been on this journey for about two and a half, three years, and we are now seeing the benefits of cutting out the middleman. So for instance, say you like clothes, you like shopping, the whole night. You want to go buy a t-shirt, t-shirts, a designer t-shirt, a nice looking t-shirt may run you about $20. It doesn't cost $20 to make that shirt. It probably costs about $3 to make that shirt. Mm -hmm. But they gotta make it, they gotta ship it, they gotta distribute it, and by the time it get to your hands, you paying four other people just for getting you that shirt. Yeah. Now how do you cut out the middleman? Make it yourself. You know what I'm saying? That may not be your thing, but every dollar in this household will count. So that's the progression. That's what we're trying to get to. Food. Somebody grows the food, somebody gotta ship the food, somebody gotta distribute the food. And by the time it gets to the grocery store and on your plate, 
about seven or eight people done touched it. You gotta pay every hand that has touched that food to get to you. That's why stuff is so expensive. So let's just cut it out. We are planning right now because I don't know how many of you know about gardening, but you have to plan and prep beforehand. So we plan to do it last year, but we got our home a bit late in the season. So we've been like studying and researching and finding out the materials we need and things that we need to do. So when that season arrives this year, we'll be ready to start planting our own crops. When the spring hit, that's when we're gonna be planting crops, you feel me? Cause that's absolutely the new year. What can change? Yeah. So we'll vlog, we're gonna vlog our experience. It's gonna be trial and error, but we're doing our just do to be able to cut out the middle man. And I know that there are a lot of misconceptions about stay at home moms that we just have all the time in the world. So somebody's probably thinking like, you're a stay at home mom, so you have time to research and do these things. But honestly, and this is no knock to any a working mom or anyone else, but a stay at home mom is no less than a person who works, if anything, honestly. I think it's more because the mental and physical is involved. Most people, they're, they go to their job to get their money, but they're not in love with what they're doing. I'm in love with my children. I'm protective of my children. I have my children's best interests at heart. So not only am I home working, but my um, task is my most valuable possession, my children. So I work even harder at that because we're growing we're raising humans okay and we want to raise good awesome amazing humans that will well around the children. yes it's not that i'm able to do these things or research these things or find out about these things because i'm a stay-at-home mom me being a stay-at-home mom is an advantage because i'm in my own environment and i can choose when and what i want to do i'm able to prioritize for myself and not someone else prioritizes for me so I understand that there are working moms that feel like you don't have all the time to do these things and to figure these things out. But one thing that I have learned over the last few years is if you really want something, you'll do what you need to do to get that something done. Like, it just is what it is. You'll do what you need to do. It may not even be something tangible. It may be things that you need to change in your life, within yourself, spiritually, to get in line with what the most high has purpose for you. Like, do the work. Start from within and do the work. Get the things done that you really want to do. You can do it. Very important. It's all about culture. The biggest middleman that you should probably cut out your life is the government. Mm -hmm. This society at large, just even in thought, they're taking from you and they're, they're making life cost more. How we got on this path, we subscribe to our original culture. And most of the women in our culture stayed at home. You know why that's so important? Because they are the guardians of your children. And that helps bring balance into the family. Stability. You want to cut out the middleman? Take your house back first. Mm. Get your house in order. Get the government out your business. Get society out your business. And raise functioning children. So that the family can stay together and continue. But that's how you do that. You got to subscribe to original culture first. Because this society tells all the women, go get a job. You got to work too. You just can't sit at home and do nothing. So since you gotta work, where well, you gotta send your kids? To daycare. And since you only make one income anyway, nine times out of 10, you have to get a voucher. So the government is paying for your kids everything. Their education, their shelter, nine times out of 10, their room and board. We wanna remove them out of our household. Because of them, we're at the bottom of the totem pole. And that's really what it's all about. Take your houses back. So another thing that we found is vital in budgeting and staying afloat financially is planning. Like, and not just thinking of something in your head and saying, this is what we're gonna do. No, I mean like really writing down things, planning things, your grocery list. Which is not easy, by the way. Yeah, it's not easy. It seems easy, but it's not. We just had a conversation earlier when we were giving the kids lunch about 
um, planning better as far as like snacks and things like that for them because I plan like down to the T for dinner, breakfast and things like that but I don't really plan as much for like snacks for the kids. I kind of just throw stuff in the cart that I know um, that they like but we really have to, we found out that we really have to plan for snacks and stuff just like we do, you know what I'm saying, for dinner. Like, I write down how many meals I'm trying to get out of one grocery trip. So I write down what I'm going to eat each day, what, what I'm going to cook, excuse me, each day. And then I divide those meals into ingredients. What do I need to make this? Like, how much does it cost? Because I know the store that I go to, we go to a store consistently because we know the prices. All of those things are important when it comes to budgeting, like literally planning a trip to the grocery store. So we just talked about earlier how we have to do that better, even with like snacks, because we're finding out we have dinner food, but we're running out of snacks for the kids before it's time to go to the grocery store again. So here's my planner where I do my grocery list. I love this planner. It's a happy planner and the cover Oops. a lot of things in this planner are reusable i need to get some more of these little things so like months that i didn't use pages that i didn't use in my planner in the past i reuse the pages even though it's not that month um i recycle the pages and that's where i do like grocery lists and things like that so i have pages here from 2017 but anywho, I first write out like, don't look at my handwriting y'all. I first write out like a list, a menu is what you would call it. And then I look at each item that I have on the menu and dissect it and see what ingredients I need to make those items. And then I devise my grocery list by like veggies, meat, uh, dairy, um, canned goods which I rarely ever use but yeah so I also um when I'm doing my grocery list I also have like whatever store I'm going to in mind how that store is sectioned off and organized so you can see like I have bread up here first because Aldi when you first go in it in our Aldi it's the bread and then they have like the snack aisle and then the veggies and then the dairy and then the meat so you know my list is not only divided into sections as far as what I'm making and what I need but it's divided up according to how the store is set up so I can get things done as efficiently as possible. So in a nutshell, the purpose of this video is to kind of get us thinking a little bit differently. We have so many different nuances that are in our households that are taken from us. Those little pieces really add up. Since we're not aware of it, that's one of the reasons that we stay broke. We gotta keep our eye on our dollar because first of all, we ain't working with a lot. They already taking taxes out. I mean, if, if you, and if you're frivolous with your money, nine times out of 10, this is why we're in a position that we in. So let's start taking more account of what comes into our household, who we allow into our household, first and foremost, the government. Okay, cut out the middleman. We thank you guys for coming back to our channel for yet another video. If you are new to our channel and you're still here and it's the end of the video, subscribe if you're already subscribed to our channel. Thank you so much. We love you. Even if you aren't subscribed, we appreciate you coming to our channel and watching our video. Do not forget to hit the like button. Share our content and the information of our channel with any and everyone you know that may benefit from the content that we put out. We love you guys and we will see you in our next video.